Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. One of the things that I'm tracking most closely is just how much the cost performance frontier is improving. In addition to just raw performance on benchmarks, I think one of the things that's really powerful right now is how much better cheaper models are getting. In other words, the gap between the -the state-of-the-art models and the faster, more performant, lower-cost models is decreasing, and that brings a lot of production-level use cases online that might have started to get difficult at -at state-of-the-art prices. In this vein, at the end of last week, Google announced an update to their small models to deliver more quality, speed, and efficiency. The update to Gemini 2.5 Flash Lite focused on better instruction following, reduced verbosity, and stronger multimodal capabilities. As a result, artificial analysis found the model uses half as many tokens and therefore should see a 50% cost reduction for tasks in production. The Gemini Flash update, meanwhile, was focused on better agentic tool use as well as token efficiency. Manus Agent found the model delivered a 15% jump in performance on long horizon tasks using their internal benchmarks. In addition, Google announced an improved Gemini Live, their audio-first real-time API for voice applications. The update has doubled the success rate for function calling and improved how the AI handles pauses and interruptions in audio conversation. You can see on the updated artificial analysis index, the new versions of the models have jumped up meaningfully, closing that gap again between the flagship and the lightweight models. This stuff is far less sexy than Gemini 3, but from here on out, guys, a lot of the updates that are going to matter for the production uses that drive your businesses are going to be these sort of changes. Now, one thing that is a big headline getter, if it ever comes to pass, will be an actually updated AI Siri. Apparently, we are still making progress towards that goal, with Apple staff now testing the new AI Siri, targeting a release date for early next year. Bloomberg's Apple specialist Mark Gurman writes that the company has developed a ChatGPT-like iPhone app for the purposes of internal testing. The app is being used to rapidly evaluate new features, as well as testing Siri's ability to search personal data and perform in-app actions across the iPhone ecosystem. This is, of course, the big unlock. The reason that people are not totally counting Apple out of the game is that the iPhone is just such a context machine that if they can get it right, it does still seem like their vision of Apple intelligence that actually knows you could come to pass. Still, when it comes to this new application, sources say that the app is purely for internal testing and won't see a public release. German wrote, Even without a public launch, the internal tool marks a new phase in Apple's preparations for series overhaul. And jumping out of his normal role as just a news reporter, German dropped some feedback of his own. He followed up his reporting with a weekend newsletter that pushed the contention that Apple needs to release a ChatGPT competitor to boost the credibility of their AI system. Reflecting on the botched rollout of Apple intelligence, he wrote, Apple's decision to pose as an industry leader while dismissing the chatbot-driven approach of rivals quickly backfired. In a rare misstep, the company bet on the wrong horse. Deeply integrated AI features instead of a ChatGPT-style experience. Apple may be right that this method of system-wide integration will be the future, but its insistence that consumers wouldn't care about chatbots was a costly mistake. Commenting on the lack of plans to release the product, he continued, This, I believe, is a mistake. While the improvements to Siri will bridge some of the gap with AI leaders, services like ChatGPT, Perplexity, and Gemini have made it abundantly clear that people want a proper chatbot experience. It's proven to be a compelling and useful tool for many parts of life. The lack of a chatbot could also make it harder for Apple to show how far it's come. Siri, after all, has some baggage. After long-standing complaints about the assistant and launch delays of the upgrade, Apple risks muddying what could be breakthrough AI technology by solely embedding it within this existing platform. Launching the chatbot as a standalone app could generate far more interest. Moving over to fundraising news, image generation startup Black Forest Labs is in talks to raise at a $4 billion valuation. The Financial Times reports that the one-year-old startup is exploring a deal to raise between 200 and 300 million. Black Forest burst onto the scene last August when they partnered with XAI to power Grok's first native image generation tool using their Flux model, and more recently they partnered with Meta on the much-maligned Vibes AI video feed alongside Midjourney, as well as being added to Photoshop's platform. The fundraising would quadruple the billion-dollar valuation from their previous round last September. Now, many articles about this fundraise are making a big deal out of this being the second big AI startup out of Europe, with of course the other being Mistral, who were themselves in the news. The Wall Street Journal recently reported that Mistral is thinking about how to access private data in order to build a new generation of models. Mistral CEO Arthur Mensch said, For the last three years, we've been able to compress human knowledge and make models increase across the board. But now we're reaching a saturation point there, and that means the next frontier is in getting access to a new kind of environment. Mistral's plan, then, is to partner with enterprises to conduct post-training using their proprietary data. Dutch chip-making equipment manufacturer ASML is one of the first test subjects. They recently invested $1.5 billion in Mistral to become their largest shareholder. 
As part of the strategic partnership, Mistral will embed their own solution architects and applied AI researchers at ASML in order to post-train their models using corporate data. Men said this partnered approach is necessary for most companies, commenting, the very high-tech companies and a couple of banks are able to do it on their own, but when it comes to getting some return on investment from use cases, in general, they fail. Lastly today, speaking of Europe and the rest of the world, Anthropic is apparently going on a big global hiring blitz to end the year. They plan to triple their international workforce and are currently actively recruiting country leads for India, Australia, New Zealand, Korea, and Singapore. The expansion will see more than 100 roles added across the London and Dublin offices, as well as new regional offices in Japan and Europe. In addition, Anthropic plans to expand their applied AI team fivefold. The expansion is being overseen by newly hired Managing Director of International, Chris Ciari. Ciari was previously the President of Europe, the Middle East, and Africa for Google, as well as serving as Executive VP of those regions for Salesforce. During his decade-long tenure at Salesforce, he scaled regional business from $200 million to over $3 billion and said, The global demand for Claude is extraordinary. From financial services in London to manufacturing in Tokyo, enterprises are trusting Claude to power their mission-critical operations. This is a key moment for Anthropic to expand the infrastructure and partnership needed to serve this growing international customer base. The announcement came with a series of statistics showing how dramatic Anthropic's international growth has been. Over the past two years, Anthropic has gone from having 1,000 enterprise customers to over 300,000. Revenue has grown from $87 million at the beginning of 2024 to over $5 billion today with Anthropic now officially claiming the lead market share in enterprise AI. Anthropic also estimates that over 80% of consumer Claude usage is now coming from outside the U.S., and believe that per capita usage in countries like South Korea, Australia, and Singapore are outpacing consumer use in the U.S. This is actually one of the really interesting comparison points to AI versus the internet. It took the internet something like 19 years to reach a point where 90% of usage was coming from outside of North America. It took AI less than two years to get to that point. This is, in other words, a truly global technology right from the beginning, and it sounds like Anthropic does not want to leave all of that opportunity on the table. For now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines edition. Next up, the main episode.